Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Exceptional Conservative Show live for the nation's capital. I'm yours truly, the Exceptional One, Ken McClinton. That microphone does make my head look big, doesn't it? No, actually, it looks. It's my ego that does it. Uh, TECN TV's president, host of the Exceptional Conservative Show. So glad to have you here tonight. Dave Milner, my brother in arms, is with me tonight, back from vacay. God bless you, sir. How are you doing? I'm doing wonderfully, Ken. Uh, back from my world tour, of course, on my toilet paper roll powered yacht. <laughs> yes, yes um, enjoying the enjoying the non polluted sea from uh, from the, no none of the riffraff being out there in their little boats, you know. Um, exactly. It's, 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 it's so much uh, so so much better, so much more elegant. Yeah. to be out there on my own. Yes. I, and I heard that you were you were doing well until you actually got to Michigan, Lake Michigan, with uh, Whitmere, uh, and she told you that you couldn't take a boat, you had to have a uh, canoe. You know, I, I understand. I really do. Oh, 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 completely. But, well, she tried to confiscate my supply of toilet rolls, and I had to turn back around and, and just head back down towards the St. Lawrence Seaway. Anyway, yeah. Uh, I hope you've been well and blessed, my friend. It was a interesting time away, and of course, the Wuhan virus was something that we just couldn't escape. Even people on, uh, even people taking time off from the social media and all the insanity. And of course, uh, Ramadan began on the 24th of last month, and that is something we cannot remember. I can tell you tonight. According to the religionofpeace.com, a great resource website for people to go to who want to learn about Islam and things of that nature, that this is day 14 of Ramadan. Mm -hmm. And there have so far been 62 attacks with 231 people killed. That's actually down from last year. So if we can say any uh, ray of light has come from this Wuhan virus lockdown, it has been that it has somewhat reduced the amount of deaths and injuries and uh, kidnappings and things of that nature that have occurred. Well, most of the Middle Easterners were busy trying to bury all of the individuals from the coronavirus anyway. Uh, it took up a lot of their time and their energy. And ISIS also had a problem that, you know, their hotel in Syria wasn't getting too many clients because uh, of the coronavirus. So, you know, it's been tough times, tough times for the Mohammedans. really has been. Well, all they really have to do is march around in the street. We found this out in Iraq. All they have to do is, uh, or excuse me, Iran. All they have to do is march around in the street and holler Allahu Akbar, and it, it'll just go away. The uh, the virus will just dissipate on its own. Exactly. Uh, yeah, so yeah. Well, they're, they're doing a little better. A little they're, better. Doing, they're doing a little bit better. Listen, you you have a story that you're going to talk with us about, uh, and it's Obama. Remember the man who never had a problem under his administration? He was the cleanest president uh, that we've ever had, never had a uh, issue or problem. Uh, but apparently, privately, he was against any type of investigation on Joe Biden. Can you tell me about that, sir? Right, this is one you handed to me. Yeah, um, and this one here, by the way, guys, uh, comes out of uh, comes out of BuzzFeed. Very interesting. And um, the headline on it is Obama privately uh, blessed a Republican investigation into Joe Biden and Ukraine, calling it an effort to boost, quote, Russian disinformation, end quote. And this is fascinating because, uh, once again, this is another example of the left hollering the most uh, that someone else is doing what they've been guilty of for a long time. Mm -hmm. All right? And the, this, this last president, Obama, was the most scandal-ridden president that there's been in my experience and possibly in the entire history of the United States of America. Never called on any of it by the fake stream media. And of course, he did not want any investigation into Joe Biden's activities in, in, the, in Ukraine. 
or his son's activities, rather, his and his son's activities. This can makes me believe that he must have known something about those activities mm. at the time. <laughs> so it, it does, it, as, as Arsenio Hall said, you know, makes you want to go, hmm. <laughs> it made me go, hmm. Uh, it's it's amazing that he doesn't want the National Archives or the Records Administration to release any of those particular records. Uh, the same man who believes in transparency when it comes to Donald Trump and his taxes uh, it, it finds it uh, a, a bit fictitious that any allegation against Joe Biden would hold up. Now, this is the same Joe Biden, and, and if, I know you've been on vacation, and... Uh, it's been the same group of people that brought us Russia, Russia, Russia. Uh, the same people who brought us impeachment, impeachment, impeachment. Or the same people who brought us COVID-19, COVID-19, COVID-19. So there hasn't been a lot of attention played to Joe Biden. Uh, first and foremost, because Joe Biden doesn't even know where he is. Uh, but secondly, because Joe Biden has allegations from eight different women of sexual assault or rape. And I want to get your opinion regarding this. I, I don't know if I got it before the vacay that you went on, but uh, shouldn't we believe the woman, Tara Reid, and the rest of those seven women? Oh, wow. Um, I have seen some of the reaction to this from the left and it it is if it wasn't so terrible it would be hilarious uh, you have you have them saying all right well we should just drop this matter because the new york times did an investigation and they didn't find anything wrong uh, all right uh, never never mind the fact that uh, justice kavanaugh was investigated by the fbi multiple times yeah for basically nothing these allegations are credible, and they are backed up with witnesses. And by the way, one of the ladies that Biden uh, had uh, had unwanted sexual contact with, let's put it this way, mm -hmm. was a survivor of sexual assault, <laughs> which in my opinion just makes it even worse. And, but the left seemed to have their usual double standard. If it's got a D after its name, it's something different. They want this dropped because they think that that their their pet paper has already examined this, and they found that, as Obama said about one of his many scandals, there's no there there. All right, but of course, with Justice Kavanaugh at the time, Judge Kavanaugh, the hashtag believe her was out there. Now the hashtag move on is out there. Mm -hmm. because the, sta the standard is different. They do not want people to examine this too closely. And you, know, you would almost think, Ken, and this is fascinating to see, I was able to peep enough headlines during my vacation to mm -hmm. note some people on the left already wanting to bump uh, you know, Joe Biden aside yeah. just because of his dementia. I mean, uh, Jeff Mitchell and I did a very good bit on EDL Radio about this, talking about his obvious, <clears throat> pardon me, the symptoms of dementia, which he had exhibited while he was on the campaign trail. Obvious signs of dementia. So you would, that you have these people on the left now wanting to bump him aside because of these allegations. There seems to be a conflict within the left. Some of them want to try and preserve him and prop him up and, and keep him there, and others want to bump him out. Now, you say Hillary Clinton is poised to take his uh, his spot. I think that it is Andrew Cuomo, all right? Uh, one of us is right, and yep. who knows? We might even both be right. We might both be right. Uh, uh, <laughs> because Milwaukee is just a few months away and I'm quite certain that they're in a holding pattern with Joe Biden, which is why they asked him to come on that call last night with the black socialists, Marxist, Social Lives Matter group 
uh, and make his statement that something needed to be done regarding the uh, two gentlemen in Georgia. Uh, until that time period, black people hadn't heard from him since South Carolina. So, quite frankly, Joe Biden is wafing away at this point. No one believes him. Nobody wants to be around creepy old Joe. And certainly, nobody believes that he possibly can ever win, even if he ran against himself he would probably lose. Well, you have a you have a, a guy that barely knows where he is at any given moment. And you know, even in that call with Hillary Clinton, which that was like a, a trip through the looking glass, what of it I heard. And the guy can't make a statement for more than five minutes without making people go, okay, what? Let, let me play this back again. <laughs> Maybe if I run it backwards, it'll make sense. All, all right. Um, but you're right. He does have to punch that quote-unquote black ticket. Mm -hmm. Even though, as you pointed out so eloquently earlier, the policies of the left, and let's not get this twisted because I've heard people on the left saying that this, this Wuhan virus is is somehow all the fault of, Tr of President Trump and Trump's supporters. Yeah. Uh, and in my view, this is the fault of their friends on the left and leftist policies. Uh, who was it? Ken, cast your mind back, and I'd say this to the viewers. Cast your mind back. Who was it who was heavily supporting the Clinton campaigns in both 92 and 96? It was uh, the Chinese. It was. Who who was it that had uh, a lot of access to the Clinton White House back in the day? Uh, was it was it the um, was it people from uh, oh, Brazil? No, 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 no. It was the Chinese. Mm. All right, uh, and you combine that with the fact that, as we've covered before, the left are getting everything they wanted through this this shutdown garbage that we're going through. If anybody wants to blame deaths or anything of that nature uh, involved with the Wuhan virus on anyone, uh, guys, it's the people that you followed, and it's the people that you empowered, and it's the people that you voted for, and it's the people that you did not research very closely because they were telling you everything you wanted to hear. It's kind of like a woman, a single mother, the single mother that that you mentioned, mm -hmm. all right, uh, being uh, uh, being abandoned by a um, being abandoned by the guy who came up to him, uh, you know, um, and had all the Rico Suave rap and everything, mm -hmm. and and was really cool and really fine looking and everything, but suddenly when she's pregnant. He's nowhere to be found. He's mm. not answering the phone. He's not answering the text. Anything. All right. Uh, you know, he's out. He's out doing his own thing. Exactly. Okay. And uh, and he doesn't want to hear from her anymore. So that's the situation you've got, Ken. Exactly. I, I want to talk with you since you have English Defense League on Thursday. So you did it earlier today uh, at three o'clock, and you also have it on at three o'clock on Sundays. I, I, you know that you spend a lot of time talking about Mohammedans and their their efficient way of lying enough for you to believe them. And so, one of the things that we got earlier this year was an agreement, actually towards the end of last year, in the middle part of December, an agreement with the Taliban uh, that they would obey, that they would be nice, they would play nice, uh, they wouldn't kill a whole lot of people, and they would allow Americans to leave. What say you, sir? How's that going? Well, the, there is a phrase, as soon as you gave me this story, there, there is a phrase that comes to mind, and that is that cultural relativism. There are still people out there who are clueless enough to think that people in that part of the world are going to think in the same way that we do. All right, that they believe that uh, people are pretty much the same everywhere. And these are people who have 
never been any farther out of Podunk than the suburb. <laughs> and sadly, many of these people reside in Washington, D.C. Well, they work in Washington, D.C. Some of them reside there. Some of them, uh, some of them live the wildlife. They, they live out as, as far as Alexandria in Virginia and places mm-hmm. of that nature. You know, I mean, they're, they're roughing it. They're roughing it. Um, and they don't understand that these people never have and never will ever think the same way that we do. They believe that that all they have to do is give the right riff, throw out the right tequila, and they can get an agreement that will get people off of their backs so they can go back to doing all the things that they've been doing and when people come back and say wait a minute you haven't been following the agreement we made then they'll say oh well we're so sorry let's sit down at the table and make (laughs) another agreement (laughs) now there's another element to it uh, though and as much as I support President Trump certainly as, as opposed to any Democrat Yes. He was in a very, uh, you know, a very messed up situation. Yeah. Okay. Because he he ran on his um, his platform of stopping these generation long wars in Iraq and Afghanistan and places like that. Okay. So some kind of agreement had to be made so that we could pull a majority of our troops out. We still have troops in the Middle East, of course. Yeah. Okay. But some kind of agreement had to be made, and his administration had to make that agreement. And I will give him enough cover here to say that any administration would have done the same thing. But any administration or anyone in any administration would have to know Unless they were, unless they were completely clueless cultural relativists, and I just don't believe that there's anyone like that in this administration or the last one, uh, they had to know that eventually this, these agreements would be broken. This yeah, agreement would be broken. The the Iran deal uh, would would be broken. When you make deals in that part of the world, unless you're prepared to back it up with overwhelming force, they're going to be broken. Because that's just the way people are in that part of the world when it comes to dealing with people who have a larger and better equipped military than they do. Exactly. You know, one of the most defeating things is when you have reasonable people trying to work with irrational people to come up with a deal that would be logical for all people. It just doesn't work that way. It doesn't. And when you have a group of people who are bent on world domination making certain that women do not have human rights and are treated like the mat upon which they walk into their front doors uh, and that their children are merely the propaganda pieces uh, and future military pieces of their rebellion. Uh, Quite frankly, it doesn't matter how many times you go to the table, these guys are fixed in mind that, you know, peace for them is seeing you in pieces. And we Americans have to understand that. Now, if we leave, we leave, and we say goodbye, but I'm quite certain the people in Pakistan and in India uh, would also be very upset with us leaving that particular area. We are a neutral buffer uh, for them. I want to let everybody know where they can listen to you, sir, uh, for you have a wonderful, wonderful program on Thursdays as well as Sundays. All right, yes, you, uh, the um, Ewan Spitz League Radio Show, podcasts live, both Thursdays and Sundays at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time, and that's 8.30 p.m. in the U.K. for all the U.K. listeners out there, all right, and we cover a number of subjects involving uh, involving Islam and is the Islamization of the world, and we talk about governments and things of that nature. I have to say here again, uh, as this is my first time being back since vacay, yeah. I find it very fascinating that as we go through Ramadan, uh, we have people like the, the luminaries over in the UK, like Boris Johnson and uh, even uh, and uh, even Prince Charles and people like that, thanking Mohammedans for their cooperation. During this difficult time, you have um, you have De Blasio in New York 
and telling Mohammedans where they can find halal meals and and giving them links and things of that nature so that everything can be easy for them. And the question I have, and the question that, that angers me, is what did Christians get during this Wuhan virus? What we got was a church parking lot with nails in it. What we got was a governor saying, uh, a governor or a mayor, I can't remember which one it was, yes. but it doesn't really matter, saying police, car, police are going to come to your church parking lot while you're having your service even though everyone's in their cars, they're going to take down license plate numbers and you're going to be quarantined for 14 days. And we have de Blasio, the self-same de Blasio, saying that if if people gather to worship, uh, be, they, be they Jewish people or Christians, uh, he's going to see to it that they're cited and even jailed. And to a lesser extent, the same thing happening in Chicago. This kind of inequality of treatment is exactly the sort of thing that the English Defense League was created for in the first place in 2005. And I will say that as an American, all right, this is the, exactly the sort of thing that we cannot put up with here in the United States of America. I want to say, Ken, that we need to open this country up. That's the best stimulus we can possibly have and move on with things. Yes. I want to, want to make an assurance here. People say, well, no, people will die if we do that. Let me assure everyone. Yes, people will. Mm -hmm. But throughout our history, throughout our history, we have, we have gone on when there have, been, there have been infectious diseases going on throughout our history. And what we did was we quarantined the sick. When they died, we cried our tears. And then we moved on and lived our lives because we knew they would want us to. Let us honor those uh, who the Wuhan virus has struck down by keeping this country going and making it a better country. Indeed. Dave Milner, the unpleasant blind guy. You can find him on shrmedia.com. Great work. You can also find him on English Defense League, EDL on Thursdays at 3 o'clock on Blog Talk Radio and on Sundays at 3 o'clock on Blog Talk Radio. Definitely someone you need to listen to. Uh, I want to ask you this finally before you go because you, you brought this to mind. Women were known as the backbone of the church and they spent the past 60 some odd years actually fighting to take posts of authority inside the church, Protestant uh, as well as Catholic. Wouldn't it be wise for these women to come out in force on Sunday and go to church? Am I totally radical here, or rebellious, uh, prefunctatory? Am I off the, the reservation per se? What do you think, sir? Ken, I believe that is a terrific idea. Since this Sunday is Mother's Day, I believe that it is for the mothers of our nation to lead the charge back to church, to lead the procession back to church, because these ladies have been, uh, to quote a comedian I heard some years ago, uh, carrying uh, men's tired butts through uh, all of our history again, through all of the hard times, all of the difficult times, and they have been as tough as nails while they have been as beautiful as a morning sunrise and uh, almost as loving as the living God. Yes, they should lead the way, and yes, good Americans should follow uh, back into the house of the Lord and let us praise his name uh, in fellowship. And again, I just want to say God bless you, brother. Keep up the good work as always. God bless you, sir. Thank you for all that you do for our nation and for the world. And you keep up the great work as well. Ladies and gentlemen, none other than Dave Milner. You can find him on SHR and also on Blog Talk Radio. Make certain that you get out uh, to him um, this weekend and listen. I have been told by Mary Brockman that I 
need to make certain that Dave has more time. I will do whatever I can to make certain that that happens. Trust me, Mary, I really want to make certain. But unfortunately, you know how fast this move, this uh, show goes. It, it really does go painfully fast. Uh, we got to take another commercial break. When we come back, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're going to close out the evening uh, and prepare for tomorrow, which is open heart, closed case night. Uh, we will be right back with more of the best right after this. Mm -hmm. 